right. Let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to let everybody know is that this is getting recorded. It will get released. You'll have the opportunity to watch it again if you have to leave halfway or anything like that. Totally fine. Uh, want to make sure it's available to as many people as possible. Uh, I want to reiterate that Craig was gracious enough with his time. We are doing this simply to share. There's no sales pitch, right? It seems like every Zoom call, every webinar has a sales pitch built in. We're not doing any of that. So I don't want you to be afraid that at some point, you know, we're going to try to steal your credit card or anything like that. Um, if you have any questions, you can drop them in the chat and we may answer them now. We may answer them later. At the end, we'll give an opportunity for, for audio Q&A if you want to ask a question. And I'm, I'm committed to keeping this to an hour. So I believe you all know me, but people watching later might not know me. Uh, I'm Jeremy Lesniak. I'm the founder here at Whistlekick, uh, host of Martial Arts Radio. And one of the things that we've been getting into more and more at Whistlekick is providing resources for martial arts schools, school owners, instructors. And today we're going to talk about something that's pretty heavy, which is what I'm calling a second wave of COVID-19 and its effects on martial arts schools. And I'm joined today by Sensei Craig Wareham. Hey, everyone. I'll, I'll let Sensei Craig give you a little bit about him because you all may not know him. Yeah. So I'm the managing director at Karate International in Exeter, New Hampshire. I have the opportunity to run the school that I trained in as a kid. Um, and I've been working there for uh, a little over half my life. Jeremy and I did the math the other day. Um, teaching, I've been teaching there for a little over half my life and uh, just, you know, trying to navigate everything. Jeremy uh, has been a huge resource for me. So when he asked me to help out, I was more than happy to jump in and see what I could do to help everyone. Yeah. Uh, there's a reason that I've invited Sensei Craig to be the person presenting with me today, and it's not because he has, you know, six PhDs in education and uh, 400 stripes on his belt. It's because, and I'll sum it up with one very simple number, and he gave me these numbers, these updated numbers before we got started. He went into quarantine with 137 students, he came out of quarantine with 131 students. Six, lost six, which accounts for four and a half percent. I'm sure there are some schools that have fared just as well. Maybe there are even some out there who did a little bit better. The vast majority of schools didn't even come close. Unfortunately, we lost a lot of schools. It bums me out. And so what we're gonna talk about today are the strategies that he and I put together at the beginning of this, because we saw this coming, we strategized together and said, here's what we're going to do. And we're going to unpack all that for you, as well as talk about what we've already discussed for round two and the things that you might consider as we move forward. One of the things that's a little bit uh, for fortunate for being here in the Northeast um, is that, you know, New Hampshire, Vermont, Maine, we, we get to watch what's happening in the rest of the country, the rest of the world, and we're behind the curve, which is nice because we can see what's happening and we can account for it. And as we saw closures happening in New York and in California, I started reaching out to people and saying, this is coming. We need to prepare for this. Some of them did. Some of them did not. I'll let you uh, infer what happened to those who did not. And I, I want to talk about the plan. I want to talk about the plan that Sensei Craig and I put together. Uh, at Martial Arts Radio, we put out a couple bonus episodes as this started happening. If you haven't checked those out, you might consider that uh, additional material that you want to go over. But everything fell under the, a two-word heading that we're going to use going forward as well, massive action. And so when, when Sensei Craig and I talked about massive action. We talked about the things that could be done that, that met that. And so I'm going to hand it over to him now to talk about what were some of those things, Craig, that, that fell under that heading of massive action rather than pull back or wait or hide in the corner. Other than calling you hyperventilating. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Other than that. <laughs> poor, poor Jeremy was my buddy. I think he heard from me every three hours for the first week or two. Um, there was a lot going on. 
there was a lot going on and it was an inter- important time. Um, I attribute the kind of, for me, the first thing I did that really helped me was I gave myself a chance to breathe. Right. So in, in Exeter, where I am, schools closed March 13th. I said, okay, all right, well, I'm going to modify my schedule. I'm going to clean my floor in between every class. I'm going to, I'm going to just make this happen. And the Monday I did that, it became very clear to me very quickly that that was not going to be good enough. Um, I had in, on a day that normally had 30 to 40 students on the mat. I had seven for the day. The entire day was seven. So I was like, I, I called Jeremy that night going, Nope, this isn't going to work. And, um, I was driving and I had an idea and the idea was, well, wouldn't it be cool if I could find a way to give every single four to 17 year old student I have private training? Because how on earth am I going to be able to be on a zoom chat where everybody's screen is this big and be able to effectively coach them or make them feel seen. And I, I felt like that that was going to be too hard of a struggle to overcome at first while I was trying to learn this. So what we did was I structured it in a way where I said, okay, I'm going to teach from nine to five every day, nine to five. And I'm going to put 20 minute blocks in there. And every 20 minutes, I will somebody new. I may not survive the week, but I'm going to try it. Um, And what ended up happening was we, I talked to Jeremy about how am I going to book these? We used a a service called Calendly um, that was pretty simple to set up. And, um, people book and it's an app that goes right to my phone. I can see what it is and it tracks things for me, which is super cool. Um, it's, it, it's free to use and, and it, it's been effective for us. So uh, let me just jump in for a second, Craig. Uh, when we talk about specific things like that, I'm going to try to drop them in the chat. Uh, like Gabe just asked that question half a second after I posted it in there, man, that's okay. Uh, so I'm going to try to supplement that as we're talking to give you those resources. If we talk about things that are, have links, I'll try to grab those. You know, I'm, I'm, I've got two monitors here, so I'll try to flesh that out. And, you know, we'll, we'll, let's play a little bit of Q and a here, Craig, you, you mentioned 20 minutes. Why was it 20 minutes that you were doing these lessons? Because when I did the math out, I figured if I could do at least three kids an hour and I did at least a 40 hour week, everybody would get probably one. And then I would find a way to make it happen for a second one if I had to. Um, I was a little bit more about my background. I didn't go to college literally out of high school. I was hired full time to run a karate school. I, I was not trained in any other thing. I have no fallback plan other than being a karate teacher. Um, so for me, failing was just simply not an option. Um, so I was prepared to work. Jeremy looked at, you know, looked at me on a call and said, dude, you're going to have to work as hard as you're going to have to, to make this work. And so I got myself in a headspace where I said, 20, I said, if I can do 20 minutes, that's three an hour, three an hour, 40, you know, and I did the math. I was like, all right, that's pretty close. And if I have to do Saturdays, I'll do Saturdays too. Um, And what I want to highlight is that, excuse me, not only is this idea of trying to reach the majority or even all the students via private lessons, because, you know, Karate International is not the only school that went this direction. I'm, I'm aware of plenty of other schools that said, we're going to, we're going to hit the private lesson side that there's only so much we can do with group classes that, you know, when you've got all these little boxes, it's really hard to see what's going on with someone, but a shorter one-on-one can work really well. Not only is that massive action, but it's also creative. It's an innovative way to deliver our product. What is our product? It's martial arts instruction. So to find those creative ways of how to do that, I think is really important. And you, you said, Craig, that um, as we were talking earlier, I, I know this, but I'm, I'm playing interviewer. It wasn't just one-on-one interviews, right? It, or one-on-one instruction that you had some group stuff, you had some pre-recorded stuff, you had a yeah. really good mix. So can you talk about that for a second? Sure. So, the, so the, the, the preface was the first thing I thought of was private lessons. And then it became clear again that I'm one dude and how sincerely, how long was I going to be able to sustain that? Right. So we had no end in sight of when we're going to be able to bring people back. So I went, okay, I have to start pre-recording things. I have to give people drills and stuff like that. Uh, A parent of, of one of my students and actually one of my adult students now, he has professional camera equipment. So I called him up. I said, Hey, can you come in? I want to pre-record some videos. 
we started setting it up where every other Wednesday he would come in. I canceled all private lessons for the day. You couldn't sign up that day. And I pre-recorded and we ended up just by having fun and breaking things down like we normally would. We ended up with like over 200 videos and I would send out two to three a week in a weekly email, say practice this specific stuff at home. So every Monday I sent out an email that was, don't forget to book your private lessons. If by the way, you go that route with the app, it will message you on your phone. Like my phone is always muted now, but it, I get apps on my phone or notifications. And if you send out a thing and you, and you say, don't forget to book your privates, your phone is going to explode with notifications at first because everyone forgets till Monday to book their karate appointments. Right. <laughs> so then all of a sudden I'll look down like, why do I have 75 notifications? Um, but then, but then what I did was I pre-recorded and I started sending that out. I did weekly um, workouts uh, and we started sending that out. I, and I encouraged people to participate in as many things as they wanted. Um, one of my initial ideas, which I, I ended up having to let go because it just didn't take off um, and I needed to spend energy elsewhere, was on weekend challenges. Right. So um, I would encourage all the kids, go take your Legos and build your dream dojo. Send me pictures, post them to my Facebook, email them to me. I want to see them. Right. Make a family martial arts movie. Right. And with stunt fighting and make mom and dad do karate with you. I got one video. Right. Like, and it was like, it was clear that they weren't going to participate. The one video was hilarious, but it was clear that they weren't going to participate. So, um, and that's a perfect illustration of your, you were so creative. You tried so many different things that there were things that didn't work and you threw a bunch of stuff against the wall. You found some of it worked, some of it didn't, some of it worked for some people and not others, but by being creative and delivering a lot of different options for people, it gave them the ability to find a sense of normalcy in their life. One of the other pieces, I'd say the secondary piece to massive action is as a martial arts school, creating some stability, being a, a, we talk about being pillars in the community as martial artists, as a martial arts school. What is a pillar? A pillar is something you can lean on. It doesn't fall over. It's stable. It's reliable. And to carry that mindset forward and to, illustrate that for people who literally are afraid for their lives because in, remember in those early days the media was telling us that we might all die next week it was a terrifying time and I'm, I'm not just i'm not not trying to be flip about this but it was a very scary time and a lot of people were looking around saying what hasn't changed what can i i kind of build my life around and for a lot of people it was martial arts to say, okay, we've got live classes, we've got pre-recorded classes, we're mailing you stuff, we've got private training. Maybe everything else in your life is changing and maybe even the way we deliver martial arts is changing, but it's still gonna be here. The schools that found a, a way to deliver have stuck around. The ones that waited, the ones that pulled back, the ones that hid in the corner did not, or they're not gonna survive round two. One of the things that we wanted to talk about, Craig, if you could talk about the um, the quality of the videos and the the kind of the paradox there that they don't have to be. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we all have trained in martial arts. We all teach and we all do. We all in some fashion are the person who looks like, you know, we're the expert, we're the professional. And I, the first time I did a video, I'm like, we're doing a five minute video. It's going to be all this stuff about a minute and a half. And I was like, Holy cow, five minutes is a long time for a pre recorded video. <laughs> like, like, I ran out of things to say. And I was like, what am I? I'm just going to stand here and stare at the. My videos are about 60 seconds, maybe a little bit longer. It is one quick drill. It is explained. It is demonstrated. It's broken down a little bit. If there's a little nuance they need, and that's it. And it always ends with, we hope to see you guys soon. And what I did was I started uploading them to my members. Uh, I have a members only section to my website. I started uploading them there um, where I already had a bunch of curriculum videos that no one ever looked at before the pandemic. They were just sitting there gathering cyber dust. Um, and now all of a sudden everyone's like, wow, I really wish we knew these videos were here. And I was like, I've been telling you for years they're there. Right. And then they were like, this is great. 
So, um, but they were fun drills. It was how to do bow staff with a pool noodle, right? It was, it was how to stunt fight. It was, oh, play this game at home. I taught part of a Kung Fu set because my background's in Kempo Karate and Kung Fu. And I taught part of a Kung Fu staff set with a partner. My partner and I were holding broomsticks. We were holding real brooms and mops, right? It was, it was trying to, it wasn't trying to make light of the situation, but it was trying to make them feel like everything at the dojo is still okay. Mr. W is still okay. Um, because our, our students look up to us. And for me, it was very, very important that they saw me laughing. They saw me smiling. They saw me saying, I care about you because I do that to them every time they're in my school. Every student I walk by and I talk to them, I, I pat them on the back. I say, Hey, how you doing? How was your dance or so? Whatever. Um, whatever's going on in their life. And I wanted them to still have that because if the, moms and dads, all of a sudden became school teachers and full-time employed and trying to figure out how to buy groceries when there's no toilet paper, right? Like they're trying to figure out how all of this, how all of this is going to work. Mom and dad, their usual support system was, were, were so flustered that I had to find a way to provide them that sense of normalcy that they weren't going to get anywhere else. Um, so my videos, some of them are goofy. And Jeremy saw that we had plenty of bloopers when we would get punchy towards the end of the day. Um, there are a lot of bloopers um, that just won't go out anywhere because they're, they're for staff eyes, you know? Um, but, but the key to those videos is to have fun with it. And remember that at the end of the day, we're teaching discipline, but it's supposed to be fun and they're getting enough stern. So those pre-recorded videos, short, sweet, fun, and exciting. That's the best way to do it. Yeah. Um, and you'll get, you'll get more people to watch them. There's a concept I want to hit on here that I think this is a good time to introduce it. And it's the concept of value. And if you think about your martial arts school, if you think of your students, why do they come? Why do they part with the time and the money to be part of the school? It is because in 100% of cases, they value what you provide to them more than they value the time and the money. Everything that we do as human beings is based on value exchange. I don't care what it is. If, if you, can, you cannot show me an example that I can't prove to you where the value is. Oh, but Jeremy, I, I pay my taxes because they make me. No, because you value being out of jail more than you value the money right? It, it exists everywhere in every decision we make. And when you start to look at the, the decision makers, whether those be the parents or maybe it's adult students, if you hone in on that value, what is it they need? Value can shift. And through all of this COVID, all the COVID, all the coronavirus stuff, what people have valued has shifted a bit. Are you going to be able to deliver the absolute best martial arts technique instruction via videos and one-on-one -on -one Zoom classes? No. If you're delivering the same caliber in this format that you were in person, we need to have a conversation about where you're falling down with your in-person training. I don't think anybody's going to question that. It is, it is a substitute. It is an inadequate substitute, but it's a substitute. But that doesn't mean that you can't deliver value in other ways. Craig talked about funny videos and being creative with the types of instruction. That's how you build value. And what Craig and Karate International did, it not only met some of those needs and maintained value, which is evidenced by people not leaving, but there were a few things that, that you guys did that I want you to talk about where I believe on the other side of this, your school will be much stronger. We talked about the delegation, the other things that you guys kind of did as a team yes. that may or may not apply to all of you, depending on how much staff you have. But I think the concepts are worth illustrating because culture matters. If you've trained at more than one martial arts school, you know that culture is not the same in every school and it's really important. So why don't you go ahead and talk about that? Sure. So first, um, my tagline that I say to everybody is Karate International is a family, right? And family doesn't, family doesn't end when you stop paying me. Um, I'm always around for you if you need me. 
Um, that goes to, I have my college kids who don't train with me anymore. They don't pay. They, they call me all the time. Um, and that, and that was important. The, the, the best reference I can give for what I want my school to feel like, and I think I'm pretty successful. Um, and Jeremy, you've been there. So I think you can attest, um, the cheers, right? Norm walks into cheers and everyone yells his name and he feels comfortable and he feels happy. Um, I think, Jer I think I'm pretty accurate that I, I, the school feels that way. Um, we, we, yes. uh, I have a competition with my, my leaders. So I have five tiers of instructor level one, two, three, four, and five. Cause I'm not clever enough to cool, come up with cool names. Um, and level my competition with my level one and twos is be the first person to greet somebody at the door. And I don't care how far away you are when you do it. Right. So they have to beat me. And if I'm in the middle of teaching technique and somebody walks in the door, I will still shout hello to them. Um, but so how did we kind of navigate finding that culture in that way here? Um, right. I got, I got off on a cheers tangent. That was, that was the direction you want me to go. Right. Jeremy. I got excited. Yeah. yeah you're good. You're good. Keep sorry, going. I get excited sometimes guys. I'm sorry. Um, so how do we make that happen? Well, first I, I was very, very fortunate and, and uh, I'm one person from KI talking tonight because I was the guy kind of sitting in the big chair in charge. Um, but there were there were college kids that I hadn't seen in a while that called me when this happened. So what's the dojo doing? And when I said, we're going to do private lessons, they said, I'm in. And they just started showing up and teaching. Um, there were eight of us at some point doing something. And here's how we made it work. Um, we We found a way to have lunch with the kids twice a week from 12 to 1230. Um, what we ended up finding was uh, that Tuesdays and Thursdays were the most popular days because we, we tracked them. So I get a chart with all sorts of numbers on it. This is how many people attend this day. This is how many, and it does it weekly for me. Um, and so I said, okay, these days, and all they would do from 12 to 1230 is log on and eat a sandwich in my face. And I would try to talk to them. OK, um, little siblings were throwing uh, carrots and it was a mess and it was crazy. Um, and I was like, holy cow, I used to be a karate teacher. What's happening to me? Um, but they uh, the lunch with the kids was m nothing more than to keep them socially connected to the dojo. They weren't in a classroom setting. They weren't just talking to me. They were having a moment where they could spend time with people from class. They were spending time with us. We were a little bit we weren't wearing our uniforms. We weren't you know, let's, let's start working. We were just like, Hey, how's it going? How's your day? Who's got their puppy with them? Show me your puppy. Like that's what we would do. I have seen more dogs and cats, by the way, in the past four months than I've ever seen in my life. And I grew up on a farm. Okay. Um, it, it's, it's, it was one of those things where to me, if we, if my staff and I just taught karate, we weren't going to survive because the, the need had shifted at this moment the students did not need to learn discipline. They needed to learn perseverance. They needed to learn how to endure a challenge. I'm going to assume that everyone on this call has gone through a black belt test. Um, we, we learned endurance folks. <laughs> Life has just given us all a black belt test, right? And it ain't over yet. Okay. I think I love that you keep calling it round two, Jeremy, because I feel like round one's done and I'm like spit in the bucket and my quarter coach keeps telling me to get up. Right. That's what it feels like. The, the, the difference is, and, and we're going to talk about this. There's no time in between rounds on this. Yeah. There's, yeah. there's no break to spit in the bucket. You hear the bell and it's, it's the end of round one and it's the beginning of round two. I, I, I like the, I like the lunch because it's creative. Yeah. It's different. And that creativity is really crucial. And I want you to take a moment, talk about camp, because I think that's a great illustration of, of taking of, of the stability that that need for normalcy, yeah. not just for the students individually, but for the presentation of the school yeah. and the confidence that the school has in remaining. So every year to give you background every year karate international on father's day weekend has done a weekend sleepaway camp for 20 years we went to lake winnipesaukee we sleep in cabins um it, it is my favorite weekend of the year and it's every kid's it is the biggest event if you're a professional wrestling fan it's our wrestlemania they, they get a they get a special logo every year they get it in january we hype it up it is a huge deal 
And every year I have 70 plus people there. Um, it's so much fun. And I was in denial. I was like, no, camp's going to happen. No, no, I'm not. No. Right. Until eventually the, the place called me. They're like, yeah, Craig, no, it's just not going to happen this year. And I was like beside myself. And I called Jeremy. I was like, no, there's no way that this camp can't happen. And we played around with a couple ideas. And then we came up with the KI 21st annual weekend camp at home family edition. And we did a virtual zoom weekend camp. Okay. So here's what it looks like. Um, first I was very fortunate again, a lot of things, I, I, I just have a vast network of people that I've met over the years. Um, I was able to get John Cena's dad, John Cena senior to come to my school, give a talk, hold the WWE championship belts on zoom. Like it was a wild time. Um, it, and as, as a kid who grew up loving WWE, I got to hold one of those belts and that was maybe the coolest experience in my adult life. Um, so he came up and he talked and I had him kick it off. And from now on, every year we can camp, we're going to have somebody kick camp off because that was so much fun. And then two of my guys who have been kind of spearheading this whole effort with me taught fort building and they got every single kid. We ended up having 22 participants building blanket forts in their living room for 45 minutes. And then they had a contest on who had the best blanket fort. And then we did a virtual campfire I, like Jeremy um, at, at my school, I've got two monitors. So I set up one monitor, I put on YouTube, I put on a virtual campfire and I shared the screen so the kids could all see a campfire. And then we just told stories. Um, one of my counselors every year at camp sings campfire songs. He zoomed in with them and sang campfire songs. And then we let it go for the night. We said, all right, we'll see you in the morning. We taught at nine, 11, one, three, five, and six 30. And, um, the first one was they were, they were learning hip hop dance or doing kickboxing. Um, they were doing one or the other. And then the next session was a friend, a friend of mine whom I met who runs a school in Exeter, California. Again, I'm in Exeter, New Hampshire. So the, one of the biggest, we had a cross country class from Exeter to Exeter, which was pretty cool. Um, he taught for a while and then I taught a weapon and two of my other guys taught a weapon. And then at three, somebody else taught and at five, so, you know, and it, all day. And then we did it two more times on Sunday. We had a uh, 9 a.m. and an 11 a.m. And we ended at noon. In between that, back to the pre-recorded videos, I pre-recorded a bunch of challenges. Lip, a lip sync challenge. I pre-recorded a fight scene challenge and we taught a stunt fight class. By the way, the lip sync battles were, were fantastic. Um, I encouraged parent participation in all of this. By the way, that's huge. Um, and the last challenge that uh, we, we really did that I, I felt like people <laughs> took ownership of was the culinary kata challenge. And um, what that was, was I watched Iron Chef America way right before I did the videos for camp. And um, I challenged them to go grab a whole bunch of stuff from the kitchen, a pot, spatula, spoon, a piece of green fruit and an orange vegetable and record themselves doing one of their katas, holding all of those things without dropping them. Um, and it was so much fun. The kids were like running through the kitchen, like ripping the kids and all the parents are like, what is that? And they laughed because the kid was so excited. Um, so in an event that in my mind, as I was getting close, I was like, this is crazy. This is nuts. Like why would, how did, you know, how did we get to a virtual camp? It went remarkably well. I didn't have any error. Everyone loved it. And it was a great event. One of the things that we do that I would encourage you to do in some fashion um, is we went above and beyond in a specific way. We offer weapon seminars at weekend camp and I wasn't going to let that go. We still did it. But two of my staff members drove around and personally delivered those weapons to the kid's house while the kid was asleep. So the kid woke up and it was like Christmas morning. It was weekend camp morning. There was a bag that's a KI weekend camp. There was a weapon and there was an autographed picture of John Cena that his dad brought uh, photocopies of that the kids could have. Um, and it was a surprise. We didn't really tell them. We let them pick a weapon. We told the parents, don't worry about it. We'll, we'll figure it out. And we delivered it um, as a surprise. And it was that personal touch, I think, that kind of went above and beyond for people. And, and made it something where like people are asking me if we're going to do it again. You know, I want to unpack that for a second. Cause it, it, that 
that little bit right there, the delivery, it illustrates everything we're talking about. And then one more concept I'm going to throw at you. It's okay. massive action. Because on a normal year, are you going to drive around to everyone's home and deliver things? No. Absolutely but not. This is a time to go above and beyond. Two, it's creative. The fact that you found a way to, to, to give kids the feeling of, of Christmas morning related to the martial arts school, related to this camp, that's huge. And then here's the new concept. I believe this firmly. If anybody ever sits down and talks to me about business, we'll probably get to some point where I'll tell you the negative can be turned into the positive if you're willing to look at it creatively enough. So what was the negative? The negative was they couldn't come out. What's the positive there? We can go to them. It wasn't just, okay, hey, here you go. Here's, here's your weapon. Sorry, we don't get to see you in person. You know, I'll see you on Zoom. No, it was, let's make this even better. It's a surprise. It's they're waking up to it. It's it's a picture of John Cena, right? It's all this stuff put together. So the kid's going to look at that, or in this case, the kids are going to look at that and not feel like they're missing out. They're going to feel like it's actually better because in that moment, that part of it is. Mm-hmm. The, the, the biggest the biggest thing that I, I wanted was how am I going to make this different, right? How do I make it exciting? Because no one's excited to be on a computer for an entire weekend, right? No, no one's excited to sit there and zoom all weekend long. Um, And it's important to know too, like I went through a bunch of drafts, right? Like my first draft of what the camp looked like was 24 classes. Like it was structured like it would be for regular camp. 24 classes, you can pick this and this, you can do this and this, you can do that. And I, I was like, I looked at it and I was like, I'm out of my mind. Like I can't, I can't possibly deliver that. What I could do was simplify it and over deliver, which is what I chose to do. And it paid off. Um, You know, it it paid off in a way where, like I said, there were kids who were kind of flaky and on the fence, like they're they're done. They're just, you know, they want to have summer. And now those kids sign up for more zooms than anyone else. Like they want to participate. Um, It kind of re-sparked them. And ultimately the the two driving forces that I have is if at any point while I'm thinking about my school, do I say, wouldn't it be cool if I instantly try to implement whatever is following that? Wouldn't it be cool if I did private lessons for everyone? Yeah. Okay. So why don't I just do it? Like, why am I limiting myself saying I can't? Wouldn't it be cool if we did a virtual weekend kit? Well, let's just do it. Let's just figure it out. Um, You know, so we're at a point where we prepare now. We're preparing for a second wave. I, we always prepare for the worst, right? We always prepare to be punched in the face and hope for the best that we don't. So I'm preparing for it. I'm preparing the rest of my 2020 events virtually. I will find a way. Um, because there's, there's no, it's not like there's a light right at the end of the tunnel, right? We're not going to be told in September, okay, all is free and clear. Let's go. Right. Like there's, there's no way. So we have to be ready for whatever that is. Um, as far as thinking outside the box, have you guys, a lot of you have guest instructors. I love guest instructors, right? I love having them at my school. I love having, having energy. I love it. Like, um, shout out to free training day with Jeremy, right? Like, um, I love that event because it's so many different teachers and it's different energies and it's different knowledge and skill. If you aren't playing with that for whatever reason, I suggest you do because before yeah, I called Jeremy and be like, Hey man, can you come teach at my school? He'd be like, well, I'm in Montpelier. You're like, <laughs> well, what do you want me to do? You want me to just drive down? And, um, Jeremy showed up and taught at the virtual camp from his living room, right? Like we are no longer limited by distance. Right. We, and, and that's one of the things that is going to persist is that people's comfort with this technology will remain. The, the idea of having someone on the other side of the country teach a class, you hook Zoom up to a big TV, that would have been weird before. It would have been goofy. It would have, been, would have seemed like a cop out. Why didn't you fly this person out? Not anymore. So there's a negative being flipped into a positive. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it, if nothing else, uh, to, to be completely honest with you, um, I taught two classes the entire virtual camp weekend. I had guests for almost everything else because I felt like 
frankly, they were tired of seeing my face on the Zoom, right? Like to make it special, it needed to be something other than this, right? Um, and, and in that in that time, the kids were excited. They, they were excited to see, they all know Sensei Jeremy and love Sensei Jeremy anyway, but they were excited to see him again. Um, they, you know, it, it's one of those things that it reinvigorates us as teachers too. Um, I, I'll be honest with you. I've been in my own school for four months and man, did I feel like I was alone on an Island. Like the martial arts community as a whole can band together and help get each other through this because we're only as strong as the others, as the others who do this, right? We can, the tide rises all ships. And, and it's, that's the thing is in a moment where we're trying to teach our students, reach out, ask for help, band together. We can all do that too. And if we do that, we will see our way through it. We'll weather the storm. Um, let's and, talk about the storm. Let's let's start talking about what's coming. If that, I, I feel like I'm giving you wonderful segues. You me. are. You <laughs> are. You're, we're, this is why we make a good team, man. Batman right. and Aquaman. <laughs> Earlier, it was it was Batman and Robin, but nobody ever wants to be Robin, uh, so we agree. And I, have, and I have Jason Momoa hair. I just I left his abs at the office. Sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's talk about what's coming. We don't know exactly what's coming. We know where we're at. We know where we've been. It could be worse. It could be better. We're seeing a lot of variety depending on where you are in the world as to what restrictions are being placed. And of course, we have to work within whatever those restrictions are. But there is one hard and fast, I'm going to call it rule, that we all have to be aware of. Whatever you did in round one will not work in round two. People are exhausted. It doesn't take long on social media to see that everyone is scared and they're tired and they're stressed. And so if we go back to this principle that your martial arts school needs to be a beacon of of stability and present some normalcy into their lives, if you are not helping to compensate for that stress, that negativity that the world is cramming down their throat right now, you are missing an opportunity. I'm not going to say definitively your school won't survive. I don't know that. But I can tell you that the opportunity here is to increase the value proposition with your students and their families by delivering to them more of what they need right now. I'm going to call it Zoom fatigue. How many of us took a look at what we were doing today saying, oh, great, another Zoom class. I did, and I'm hosting it. (laughs) Jeremy, if it makes you feel better, this is my, like, 12th one of the day. We're all sick of Zoom classes. We're sick of it. But it works, it's cheap, and we're going to have to keep doing it. But it doesn't mean this is it. You need to give other stuff. This is where the creativity comes in. If you're going to, if you're going to run the same playbook you did before, you're not making it into the playoffs, right? That's what this is. We've seen some attrition. You've got to go back. You've got to take a look at what worked, what didn't work. Some of you know about my rule about uh, making 15% incremental improvement. This is a time for at least that. You've got to take a hard and fast look. Okay. If I put in 20 hours into running this school before, I'm going to need to put in more. I'm looking at 25 or 30 now. If in that 20 hours, I did A, B, and C, and my students loved A, they liked B, eh, they kind of tolerated C, C is out. Dump it. It doesn't mean that you you put all that time back into A. It means that you come up with D, E, F, G, and however many other fingers you have, and you throw stuff at the wall and you see what sticks. Will a lunch group work? Maybe. What about a book club? What about, Craig, you and I brainstormed like 30 different things the other day. Oh, we did. And we, um, yeah, so that's, Jeremy just hit it. We talked about this the other day, he and I, and um, we're starting our book club in about a, in about two weeks. Um, I have two parents willing to helmet. One's a librarian, one's a, a former high school English teacher. So they said that they would love to help. Um, 
Yeah. You, the thing is you have to have, and I was already toying with the idea of having, I call them off hour clubs. Um, I, I love schools, right? I love them. I think that there are certain things that they do very, very well. Um, and I don't, I mean like elementary, middle and high schools, not martial arts. I love martial arts schools too, obviously, but I looked at what they did and I said, what can I do to make my school seem like school? And um, so I looked at clubs. I've got two groups of teenagers that play Dungeons and Dragons once a week. I've got the lunch groups. I'm starting the book club. I've got a teen who wants to literally sit and play guitar, I think, but she'll have other kids play with her. Right. Like I, I have started doing and Jeremy used this word the other day on our phone call and I like it. I have started deputizing people to help me because I'm one dude and I can only do so much. And if you ever see me play guitar, you'll know that I can't. <laughs> right. Um, so you, I start to find, I deputize people. I say, Hey, you know what? You're a librarian. Can you give me a reading list? And would you help me do a book club? Hey, Jeremy, you know way more about stuff than I do. Will you please talk to me on the phone while I breathe into a brown paper bag? Right. Like <laughs> that's, I, I find ways to, to deputize people to help me um, because we're in a world now that martial arts schools have never had to survive in, right? Like the, in our, in our memory, we've never had to fight through a pandemic. So there's no roadmap. Um, so as far as round two goes and preparing for it, my advice would be a couple of things. Find one voice, maybe two that you trust wholeheartedly and silence the rest of the business pages you're on telling you all the things that won't work for your school. Um, because if I approached any of you and you kind of knew me, and I said, I'm doing all private lessons and that's it. You probably would have said, I don't think that's going to work because I didn't think it was going to work and it worked. Right. Like I, I, I had to silence voices because there were so many telling me what I should do that I couldn't make a decision. So I picked Jeremy and I picked the owner of Karate International because I don't own it. The owner is John English. I, I picked John and they were my two sounding boards. And um, that was it. And after that, I just made decisions. I would keep, I would ask my team's uh, help once in a while on their opinions, but for the most part, it was what I say is what we're going to do. Um, and the other thing is just try to have fun. And it's the same thing when I teach, when I go and I teach instructor development to, to people and I, and I try to help them become better teachers. Martial arts is supposed to be fun. Yes, we're stressed that our schools may close. I'm doing okay, but I'm also aware that I could wake up tomorrow and have a bunch of people say, you know what, we're done with Zoom fatigue, right? It's real and I know it's coming if I don't do something about it. So I'm stressed about making sure the school's going to stay open and can I keep my team and we've got... You know, can I keep my livelihood? I want to make sure that I'm meeting the expectations, obviously, of the owner. I want to make sure that I'm meeting the expectations of my students. And and eventually, it just doesn't become fun. And it's easy to be fatigued. And then if you're on Zoom all day, you're like, holy cow, this is not what I signed up for. Right. And, and it, it can become very easy to lose that passion that we all clearly have because we're on a call at 9.15 at night trying to figure out how to get through this. Yep. Right. One of the things moving forward, I'm going to encourage everyone to do, I mean, on top of everything else that, that Craig just talked about, is broaden the definition of what a martial arts instructor is. Mm -hmm. If a martial arts instructor is someone who kicks or he teaches kicks and punches and forms and fighting, there are only so many ways you can combine those ingredients without being there in person. But if, like me, you define a martial arts instructor as someone who is fostering the personal growth of the students that attend their classes. That becomes a much broader set of ingredients to work with. What is personal development, personal growth? Think about all the things that are in there. How do you work with that? Would it make sense for there be, to be a, um, a mom's group or a men's group under the umbrella of your school. Maybe you have a licensed therapist who's willing to donate their time, or maybe you just have somebody who's been in a number of groups like that before and wants to run them. The future of martial arts instruction is broadening that definition. If any of you caught the episode that we released 
on Martial Arts Radio a couple of weeks ago about the coming opportunity in teaching homeschool students. A lot of the information there dovetails into what we're talking about today because everybody's kind of a homeschool student right now, right? Our roles as instructors are responding to the needs of the student, but also the people around them, the families, the parents. Craig talked about virtual camp at home family edition. We picked those words. We talked about those words and the importance of family edition because it set the tone that those offerings weren't just going to be for the student. It was going to be for that entire family. How do we get the others involved? Yeah, maybe because we're hoping that they'll enroll down the line, but also because let's put ourselves in the place of the parent who is trying to get their work done, trying to get their housework done, trying to deal with kids. A lot of families don't have all the kids enrolled in martial arts, but maybe we can get the parent 30 minutes of time because the kid who's not normally training is now in class doing something that's easily approachable or has been sent off on a scavenger hunt or something. If you think about, we were talking, you, you hit this, I want to hit this point again. If you think about what schools, what public schools, private schools, non-martial arts schools typically provide, think about the things that aren't being provided right now. The social component is massive. I'm seeing some, some, some stuff coming out, talking about concerns around children's socialization. And if, if, you're, if you have kids, you're probably seeing some changes. What else is there? there there's meal stuff, whether it's you're finding a way to work with the community to get meals provided or just eating meals together. Think about what happens in a typical day of school. They're not doing the same thing over and over again. They're not doing martial arts, martial arts, martial arts, martial arts, nor are they doing math, 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 math. There's variety in there. So finding variety is key. We're good at giving them movement. We're good at giving them structure. It's time to give them some of those other things. And two quick points to, to that. One of the things, the first thing I did to try and project confidence to everybody was I sat down and I did a video just like this. It was just me sitting on a stool. And I said, guys, I'm sorry. This, we're all going through this right now. We'll get to this together. I have said for years that Karate International is a family. I've talked the talk. Now it's time to walk the walk. I'm here for you and anything you need. I love you guys. And I am here for you always. And then I said, I'm excited to see you at the grand reopening. When we're allowed to have you all back. And ever since then, all we've done is talk about the grand reopening. We're so excited. We're going to have a huge raffle. Kids can earn raffle tickets by posting videos to Facebook. No one does that. No one gets those tickets. Participated in two private lessons a week. Participate in the weekly theme. We had a tropical week. We had crazy outfit week. We had crazy hair week. We had fun fact week, animal week. I, I ran out of weeks at one point. I was like, what's this week's theme? And somebody said wild card. And I went deal because that meant that it was going to be whatever the instructor wanted it to be. Um, and we started to make weekly themes and, so, and, and it made, it was fun. The kids had fun. We did hero week, dress up as your hero, right? Some kids dress up as mom or dad and some kids dress up as, as a doctor or a nurse right now because of everything going on. One kid dressed up as me. And uh, I think it's just because he was trying to get a stripe. Um, you know, but it was, it, it, it's something where if we can find ways to make it fun because we participated on pajama week, you better believe I was teaching in pajamas with my belt on, right? Like I was for sure participating crazy hair. This thing goes down to my back. So it was like all over the place. It was wild. Right. But when the kids see you having fun too, it makes them smile. And if you make them smile, they're going to want to come back. And, and there, that's, that's making a kid smile right now is the most valuable thing we can do as leaders um, in the community. Um, the other thing I did, something you can do, I have a great relationship with the PE teachers in my school district. The minute school closed, I called them or texted them because some of them are, are where I'm friends with. And I said, hey, how can I help you? You're teaching, they're teaching just like we are. PE teachers have to teach on Zoom or, you know, different elementary school apps. They're pre-recording videos too. I jumped ahead and just pre-recorded some videos. Hey, this is Mr. Ware from Karate International. I wanted to let you guys know that right now things are crazy. I'm thinking of you. If I can help at all, 
let me know, you know, and, you know, I'm thinking of all the students at X school. Here's a couple of drills you can try at home if you too want to get your white belt someday. You know what? The parents sent them out, um, or the the teacher sent them to the parents and the and the kids, and they said all the kids were so excited to see something different, and they were excited to see me because they look forward to seeing me every year. And some schools didn't get to see me, um, but it's about being that leader in the community that we always want to be. But sometimes we go, I'm just I'm just a martial arts teacher, like. Oh yeah, I have this. I'm just a karate teacher. I'm just a kickboxing teacher. I'm just a kung fu teacher. Well, you're more than that, right? You're you're a leader. Like, how many of us do this because we looked up to our teachers? You're that person to them. So they're watching, going, "Oh, how is Mr. W going to do this?" And I wake up every day going, "How is Mr. W going to do this?" <laughs> you know, but but we find a way. And if you can do that, I think that helps get through get through round two and, and moving forward. Yeah, let's let's move on to questions. Sure. Uh, and so I've I've got a question. Eric dropped a question in the chat, and I'm I'm going to read that and I'm going to respond to that, and Craig and I'll respond to that. Uh, but if anybody else has questions, the best place to put them is in the chat because then I can read them uh, instead of us playing the audio game and who's going to unmute and everything. Uh, so Eric wrote in, COVID-19 has definitely impacted the memberships of lots of schools. I believe it has also shown some students that the instructors may not have been ready or able to deal with the challenges. What advice would you give to students and instructors that may want to leave their school and train elsewhere? Oh, this is a tough time for that, right? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I mean, we're, we've been, everything we've talked about this evening and everything I've seen discussed online has been around student retention. None of it's been around recruiting. I cannot imagine trying to bring in new students right now, but the longer this goes on, the more important that's going to be because there will be attrition off and we'll have to figure out a strategy for bringing in new students. I'm going to be honest, this new, the, that part of this question is beyond the scope of what we're talking about today. Mm-hmm. Because the strategies that you're going to use to bring in new students at this time are very, very different than the strategies you're going to use to keep students. Usually the, the gap between them is not this big. When I, when I work with my, my clients, whether they're martial arts schools or not, generally we're focused on retaining students and that tends to spider out and it'll bring in new students or new clients. Some of that will continue to happen, but we're talking about a daunting thing, joining a martial arts school yeah. at a time that's already daunting in a format that is weird, right? It's tough. So we're not going there, but I want to talk about if instructors want to leave. If this is at all financially related, if you, rec- if you, if you are training, let's, let's say it's a situation like Sensei Craig, you don't own the school, but you train at the school. It is your principal source of income. This is not the time to leave. This is not the time to jump ship. You're not going to replace that income. Don't try. If the school closes, you do what you got to do. And yeah. maybe you're, you're, you're driving for Uber or maybe you're starting up your own private zoom martial arts school. I I don't know. I don't know what that looks like, but I think bottom line, if we go back to some of these principles we've laid out today, we're looking for stability. We're looking for normalcy. This is not the time to try to change. Do you have anything that to disagree with or add on there? No, I think that, I think that that was right. I I mean, I I'm the type of person who, when I get a question, I like to ask more just so I can understand better, but I'm going to, Eric, I'm going to give a general answer. And then if, if I don't hit the nail on the head, feel free to reach out to me one-on-one and I'll try and answer better. Um, so if, if you are in a situation where you're like me, right. Um, I was very, very fortunate. Like John English, the owner of the school said, you know what, Craig, you've been here and you've been working for me for 15 years. Um, just do it. I trust you. And he handed me the reins of the school and, um, he has not set foot in since cause I told him to just kind of get out of my way. Right. Um, there couldn't be too many cooks in the kitchen, by the way, I have the coolest job in the world cause I could tell my boss to get out of my way, which is pretty cool. Um, but what, what I would say is that right now we're living in unprecedented times and no one has the roadmap for success on this. 
as much as I'm sitting here and I'm giving you as input um, tomorrow, I may make a decision that changes all these things, right? Like, like I'm not going to sit here and sit comfortably saying that my way is the best way. Um, I would say, take it one step at a time and try to empathize with everyone, right? We're all going through this for the first time together. Um, that goes for being an instructor, working for somebody who's trying to figure it out. That goes for being a student. Um, my, uh, one of my teachers, I haven't trained, I've trained with once. Um, okay. Sorry, Eric. I just saw your follow-up. Um, we, uh, I haven't seen my Kung Fu teacher for months, really. I saw him once. Um, and I just kind of said, you know what? It is what it is right now. It just, it, it is this. Um, I think Eric, there's, there's other ways we can incentivize employees to obviously we want to pay them. If they're paid employees, they, we got to find a way to pay them. If we have to lay them off, we have to lay them off. And we try to find a way to, to coordinate that in some way and reconcile and say, listen, right now, this is where we're at. I'm going to have to furlough you, but we can. And I think that's a longer conversation that either Jeremy or I, or the three of us can have. Um, but there, there are certainly ways we can find to, keep an employee or an instructor invested. And one of the biggest ways is just to sit them down and say, look, this is new to all of us. We're working it out. We're fighting through this. I'm doing the best I can. I need you to communicate with me and, and just listen with an open heart, listen to hear what they say, and then go from there. Um, that's pretty much what I've done. Um, most of my team right now are volunteers that came back from college and had nothing, as they say, nothing better to do than to help me teach kids karate. Um, and I'm always like, Oh, wow. Thanks. Glad I'm such a priority guys. Um, but they, they, they jump in and they help. And I know at any moment, if one, one of them could say I'm done and we just have to find a way. Um, but I think for sure, Eric, there's, there's a larger conversation we can have that would help with that. Um, right. Jeremy is a, yeah, yeah. yeah okay. I think, I think that's, that's a good place to end that. I mean, yeah. Eric's follow up you, you alluded to, but I may listening later, but wouldn't know. Uh, and just the last bit, I think the owner was not prepared. None of us were prepared. No. It, the, we weren't prepared, but as martial artists, we have to adapt. We have to find ways through. I mean, that's the common thread in just about every black belt test I've ever seen is that it's finding a way through, finding a way to prove that your limits are not as clearly defined as you think they are. And sure. that's what we're going to have to do moving forward this this round two could turn into round 12 we don't know what this looks like and if you want to continue to teach martial arts if you want your contribution to the world to be to include that it's going to require throwing stuff against the wall rapid iteration finding out what works what doesn't work doing more of what works finding the balance and being willing to stumble and be humble about it. Let the students know, hey, we're figuring this stuff out. The playbook's gone. This is, we're, if you're an all football fan, we're calling audibles on every single play from here on. Okay. That was the first major point I made. Um, it, when, this, when the schools closed on March 13th, I shut the school down for a week. And I told parents, and I was very honest, I said, guys, there's no playbook for this. No one's ever had to deal with this before. I need a week to figure out what I'm going to do and to breathe. And, and I was very honest in that way. I said, I need, I need to set things up for you so it's a success. And I still say, they're like, hey, when are we going to do this? I haven't done a belt test since March. You know, I had to think about that. <laughs> I haven't done a belt test since I could have people in person. And I had some kids who were graduating, going off to college soon, who haven't earned their black belts yet. They're supposed to test this summer. And I said, guys, I can't, you got to be six feet apart. You can't fight. What, what are we going to do? And they, they all said, no, we want to just, we want to earn it when we can earn it. And they want, and you know, that's, that's a testament to them, but it's also just being honest, not going, getting frustrated saying, I don't know what to do. And I don't know what you was, Hey guys, we're working it out as best we can. You know, yep. at, at the end of the day, we're martial artists and we'll get through it. Exactly. All right. Um, I'm not seeing any other questions come in. So let's do this. If anybody has follow up, maybe you're watching this later, listening to this later. If there's stuff that you want to ask, the easiest thing to do is to email me 
uh, because that's, you know, it's going to go out over all the whistle kick channels. So you can email me if it's a question that is most appropriate for Sensei Craig to answer. I will forward them over to you to me, uh, Craig, and we'll, we'll get through, we'll get through all this stuff together. You know, I'm, uh, I, I can't, I can't commit that Craig and I will, you know, answer every single question in tons of depth and draw out lesson plans for you and critique all of your videos but we can answer your questions. We can offer some advice. We can offer some, some uh, support through this because that's what we're all doing, right? We're, we're leaning on each other.